So for example, if I'm looking for a particular product, I want to guide that person to that product page, not my home page but that product page, because that's where they're going to make the decision. Now, typically with e-commerce, what we know is the first thing the person wants to know is, do they have the product that I want? Then we see them do a couple of other things. Then they go back to um, typically the about page. Who is this company? Do I want to work with this company? So first they looked and they saw, yes, you have the product. Then they want to know who you are. Then they might go to how do I order page. They might go to um, the home page to see what else you have. It, 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 not just that product, but do you have other products. Then they go back and they order. And then they go through your order process. And if that's not good, they're out of there and you've lost a customer. But basically, you can test these landing pages. What, what we have done, what, we had one client that, had, that was an insurance company. And we did um, this A-B testing. And we did it with a picture. We had two pictures. One picture with the person looking out and forward in front of the screen. And the other picture had the eyes of the person, the picture, looking at the content. Conversion went up 50% when the eyes were looking toward the, the, the information rather than straight out at you. No human would be able to really figure that out. But when you do testing, you can figure it out. We had a, um, a website that was for dating. And we took out one field to see if conversion would be enhanced. Conversion was enhanced 90% when we took out one field. And I can guarantee that most of you wouldn't have guessed the field that we took out. Gender. No. Nope. <laughs> Keep going. I hear. Sexual no? <laughs> good, good thought, but no. <laughs> it turned out, no? That was a good one, too. I would have thought that. That's what I thought. But it actually was, and you can think about this yourself and why, height. Now, why would height be so important? Who knows? Tall guys always win for presidents. There you go. Who knows? <laughs> but anyway, it, it worked. And people signed up, and people didn't want to put in their height. We don't know why. We still don't know why. It's, it's a mystery. But anyway. This is, um, so A-B testing, then you have what we call multivariate testing, which means if you have a lot of results, you can change a variety of factors and you can keep changing it. And obviously, you, what you're looking for is getting better and better and better conversion until you, what we call, you have a killer landing page where the conversion is so high that everybody who gets there has to buy it or has to try it or has to click through or something. But, you know, that's what you're going for, basically with um, the optimizer. And you have reporting, you have uh, analysis, you have a lot of good stuff. But it's all free, and it's, it's there for you if you understand how to, how to use it. OK, now, you know, the other type of search, obviously, is paid search. And as I said before, one of the real keys about paid search is the impressions. A lot of people underestimate that impressions, even though people are not clicking through, you still are there on page one for the majority of time if you're paying the bidding, the highest bidding price. Especially in local, it's a little easier to get there, especially if you're in a niche market. So you're not paying that much, but you at least guarantee that you are present a lot of the time. Now, if you're a national company, you also can pay, do paid search, and that will help you. And a lot of the national companies actually do do that because they have the budgets. They, they do. Um, but that guarantees that they're going to be there, even if the local intent overrides it for the natural search. See, I'm, I'm saying natural now. <laughs> um, but you know, basically, um, even, even if the natural search comes up, you still can come up in paid search uh, under your keywords because you're paying for it. So every time someone, you know, you bid high, you're going to come up. And so that, that's a way to, to take care of it. Um, so um, what they have now is they have an expanded view for, um, uh, for the searches too. So they have <coughs> product extension results. Now, this is very nice, too, because, again, you're not paying. <clears throat> Even if you're in this paid result, if they click on the product extension, you see the products. You see yet another screen with the products, but you're not paying until someone clicks through. So again, you're getting, a, a, you're getting more value for your, for your buck because you now have that extra page that comes up, even though um, you know, if they click through, then they're really a, a serious customer. So that's not a bad thing, but you have that extra, that extra piece. Now, 
The next slide, <clears throat> the next group of slides is for those people in marketing that want to think about how the internet really works as far as the buying cycle. Because I always feel as a marketer, people want to know what's the, you know, what's the, the series of steps that, that are taken. And so that's why I put this in because I think it's important to see this. Basically, you have your buying cycle, your sales and your need. And basically what we have is in the buying cycle, you have a, a, a pre, before people buy, you have the um, beginning of the buying thought process, you have the middle, the end, and the spread of the viral, okay? So basically, if people in the old fashioned buying cycle would say, okay, first we make people aware, okay? In the internet, we start with a need. Somebody has a need for something, and that's where we start, okay? So before you even do anything, typically a person has a need or they need to be made aware at least. So that would be either an ad that they see and they say, oh, I think I need it, or they know that they need it, okay? Now, in search, believe it or not, people are already in the buying cycle. They already have identified themselves. If they go to Google, they have identified themselves that they're in, that they're searching. Because they've already identified that they have a need, whether it's information, whether it's product, whether it's you know, services, whatever it is, they have a need and they're already in the buying cycle. Now you can do two things. You can either get a branding um, element in it, that you brand your company, or you can have long tail keywords. And that's when somebody searches with four or five words. I need to find a service for my TV repair. That's a very long string. And typically when you have a string that long, that's usually going to lead, if, you're, if you get that click through, if you've optimized your site for that particular term, you're gonna get every one of those clients. So long tail words are where a lot of clients um, get. We have one client that does e-commerce. They, their site, they don't do any paid search at all, but their site is highly optimized for every long term, term, term keyword, uh, long tail keyword that, that's out there. Branded and non-branded. So if you're looking for a product with a, with a barcode and a, uh, you know, a particular SKU, whatever, all of that is visible. So they get every client with the long tail. And they make, over mil they make millions of dollars online without doing any you know, uh, other types of searches because they have so many of these words and so many products that they just, they just clean up from that alone and that's all natural search. Okay, so now um, basically you're in the beginning middle where people are starting to get familiar with your product and they consider it. Well, in the, in the um, internet, you're basically in the search and you're looking at choices. Now, you're one click away from a competitor in the search. So I've, I've really talked to some people you know, while we were talking, while we were eating, and I was saying that you may have the biggest competitor in the world across the street. You may be a furniture store and your biggest furniture store competitor is right across the street. I mean, we have a situation in, in well, I live in Wayland, where you have Home Depot and you have Lowe's, and they're like, two steps away from each other. So how do you know which one you want to go to? But online, that if, if, if uh, Home Depot has a presence online and Lowe's doesn't, then they're not an online competitor, even if they're across the street. So the only competitors that you want to really worry about are those competitors in your space online that have optimized and that are in the search results right next to you. Because typically what's going to happen is online people are going to search. And they're going to see your results and they're going to see your competitor's results. And your competitor may not be across the street. They may be a national company. They may not even have presence in your town. But they're competing with you if they come up next to you. And that person may click on their product and your product. And now it's up to you to have a better website and a better story about why you're better service or why you know, they should shop with you.